is the Bible organized, and why does it matter? We'll address that question today on The Bible Brief. In episode three of this series, we attempted to describe God and what God is like. And in the middle of that episode, I dropped a hint to you of something that we'll talk about in this one. The hint was this, that in the Bible, we primarily get to know about God through the narrative itself. That is, it's through an unfolding story of God and his relationship with his creation that we come to understand more about God. Since the Bible is really one big story, we then need to understand how that story is organized. You might be saying to yourself, wait, if the Bible's just a story, don't we just start at the beginning and read it through until we get to the end? Well, the short answer is no, simply because the Bible is not organized in strictly chronological order. Here's the reason. The Bible contains not merely a narrative story, but also other things as well. It includes songs and poetry, wisdom sayings, prophecies, letters written from one person to another, and occasionally long writings to form an argument about something. Said a different way, the Bible contains lots of genres of writing. And for the most part, the Bible has been organized according to genre rather than chronology. Poetry is largely grouped with poetry, even if poems were not written even close to the same time period. Since the Bible is organized in this way, it's important to be able to navigate the Bible in a way that we can understand the story as it unfolds. So we'll be diving a bit more into that organization in this episode. The first major division of the Bible is between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We won't get into why that's what they're called, but we need to know the names, Old Testament and New Testament. This division roughly occurs at a single point in the story of the Bible, and that point is the birth of Jesus. Now, up to this point, we haven't talked much about Jesus, but he is the top of the mountain of the biblical story, and we'll learn lots more about Jesus as we continue this study. What we need to know now is this, that the Old Testament is before Jesus is born, and the New Testament is essentially Jesus' birth and afterward. The Old Testament takes up about 75% of the Bible's pages, while the last 25% is the New Testament. As we go a layer deeper into the organization, we get what are called the books of the Bible. Books are perhaps the basic building block of the Bible, and I'm sure you've heard of some of them. Maybe you've heard of Genesis, or the Gospel of Matthew, or perhaps the Book of Revelation. In any case, these names are the titles of individual divisions called books. Think of books as individual contributions to the Bible as a whole. The Bible is like a library made up of just 66 small books. If you think of it like that, a library full of books, you'll have the best understanding of what the Bible is. I call that the best understanding for a reason. The word Bible actually comes from a Greek phrase, ta biblia, that simply means the books. So when you pick up your Bible, you're really picking up a little library of the books. And that's why we call the books the basic building blocks of the Bible. One other thing to note about the books, though, is that they are also a conversation. What I mean by this is that the books themselves comment on one another, and they're not simply distinct and separate from each other. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, lays the groundwork for what occurs in the rest of the Bible. But as we read the rest of the Bible, we come to see a fuller picture and description of the happenings in the book of Genesis. In some ways, the books are like two friends telling you a story. One friend starts with the basics of the story, while the other friend amplifies, explains, and adds to the story so that after each friend has spoken, you get a fuller view of the whole story. This is what I mean when I say that the Bible is a conversation, and each book is part of that conversation. Okay, so, quick review. At this point, we know that the Bible is divided first into the Old Testament, the first 75%, and the New Testament, the last 25%. And then from there, it's divided into 66 individual books, of which 39 are in the Old Testament and 27 are in the New Testament. Now, before we move on from books, we need to say something about book order. Libraries, after all, have an order to them. The books in the Bible are largely ordered by genre or writing style in modern Bibles. 
In the Old Testament, the narrative history books are together, then the wisdom literature that includes poems and songs, and then we get to the prophetic books where God uses prophets to communicate with people and nations. When we get to the New Testament, we have more narrative history, then letters of correspondence, and finally, a prophetic narrative in the final book of Revelation. Now, you don't need to remember all of that at this point, but what you should remember is this. Because the books are organized largely by genre, chronological order can be a little difficult to figure out. Thankfully, we can look at clues in the text to help us, and this is why some people choose to purchase a chronological Bible, which puts all the Bible writings in their approximate chronology. To sum this up, we need to do our best to figure out where a Bible book fits in the overall story as we read. And what we're going to do as we explore the Bible story is simply set these in a chronological order, so we won't need to worry about that in our Bible Basics series. Okay, so we have the Old Testament and the New Testament, and then we have those split among 66 individual books. Within each book, there are two other divisions— Chapters and verses. Chapters are essentially one to two page sections within each biblical book. If we think about the first book of the Bible, Genesis, we can flip through it and see that Genesis has 50 chapters. These chapters are identified by the big numbers that you'll find throughout your Bible. But once you start reading one of these chapters, you'll notice even smaller numbers that occur every sentence or two. These little numbers are the verses of the Bible. Now, when you hear verses, you might be thinking of a poem with verses that rhyme or something like that. When we talk about Bible verses, we're simply saying it's a little tiny section of the book. We're not really saying that it's a poem or anything like that. Just wanted to provide a bit of clarity there. So this can get a little complicated, this organization. So let's review it one more time. The biggest sections are the Old and New Testaments. Then one layer deeper are the 66 books. One more layer are the chapters within the books. And finally, the smallest layer contains verses within those chapters. So it's verses within chapters, within books, within testaments. Okay. Now, before we leave this episode, we need to talk about one more thing. Referencing a particular passage. We'll be doing this a lot, and we need to make sure that we have some alignment here. When we reference a passage in the Bible... The convention that is commonly used is this, book, chapter, verse. Notice that the testaments are not used when we make a Bible reference. Instead, it's just book, chapter, verse. So one verse that we've already talked about on the podcast is Genesis 1-1, or the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis 1-1. This is the verse that says, In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now, if I want to mention the last verse in the book of Genesis, I would say this reference. I would say Genesis 50, 26. Or the book of Genesis, chapter 50, verse 26. It's that simple. We just reference book, chapter, and verse. If you're reading along with us at any point here, it could be important to use the table of contents in your Bible so that you can find each of the 66 books. You may not be familiar with where in the Bible each of the books is, and that's okay. The table of contents will be a useful tool for you. Okay, so this week we've answered some good questions. Is the Bible relevant? Is it okay to ask questions? What is God like? How do we learn more about God? In today's question, how is the Bible organized? Next episode, we're going to start with the Bible story and begin making our way through the big grand narrative with God as the main character as he interacts with the people he created. If you want to get ahead for our Monday episode, I'd recommend reading Genesis 1 through 3 this weekend. That's the book of Genesis, chapters 1 through 3. This should take you maybe 10 or 15 minutes. We can't wait to get started on the big story of the Bible, and we can't wait for you to join us then. See you next time on The Bible Brief. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible. Have you enjoyed the podcast? Leave us a five-star review.
Have you donated to the Bible Literacy Foundation? We'd love for you to partner with us so that we can expand our reach and grow. Your support means more people will have access to the life-changing story and message of the Bible. The easy way to donate is to click the link in the notes to this podcast episode. Alternatively, you can go to our website, BibleLiteracyFoundation.com, and click Donate on the top menu. Thank you for making this show possible. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022